All right, so we're in section 9.5 today. And we'll talk about our, our, our first new coordinate system. Sometimes, often, it is, uh, will be desirable for one reason or another not to use coordinates, rectangular coordinates, x and y, not to use things that are based on right angles. Um, and polar coordinates are one way that we can do that. So what we're going to do with polar coordinates is I'm going to draw my axes. And instead of x and y, what we're going to do is draw from, this, from the origin to the point, we're going to draw a ray. So this is very similar to what we did when we talked about trigonometry. And we're going to call the distance from the origin to the point r for the radius. So r equals a distance from the origin to the point. And we're also going to talk about this angle theta. And instead of x and y, we're going to call the coordinates of that point r theta. So if, we, if we're a certain distance from the origin and we know how much we rotate, that's going to take us to a, a specific point. And theta is our angle from the positive uh, x-axis, but we're going to call this the polar axis now. We're going to call the origin is the pole. Like we have a north pole and a south pole on the globe. We have a pole for our origin. And we're going to call this axis the pi over 2 axis. So we have the polar axis and we have the pi over 2 axis. The other name that we give the polar axis is the theta equals 0 axis. So theta equals 0 along that axis. So instead of an x and a y, we give this point an r and a theta. Now the polar coordinates are going to be nice when the thing that we're, things that we're talking about are, have something to do with curves of some kind. So what, the first thing I want to do is talk about how we plot points in polar coordinates. So that's what I gave you the graph paper for. This is polar graph paper. So let's take a look at doing plotting a couple of points on your polar graph paper. So your polar graph paper kind of looks like the unit circle. But the way it works is we have multiple radiuses. So we could say this is radius equals 1, radius equals 2, radius equals 3, radius equals 4. And then we have our, our unit circle angles marked there. And our, our origin is here in the center, our pole. So if we want to plot plot the point 2 comma pi over 3, well, this is our radius is 2. So we're going to be on the second ring here. And theta is pi over 3. There's radius 2. There's theta equals pi over 3. So that would be the point 2 pi over 3. If we wanted to plot um, the point 3, negative pi over 6, this says we go out to radius 3, and we go clockwise pi over 6. Sorry, negative pi over 6. There we go. 
And we can see from the graph that this is the same point as 3, 11 pi over 6. So that's how we plot points in polar coordinates. We go to the radius that we're interested in, and we go around the angle that it tells us to go, and we get a point. Well, because we've talked about trigonometry uh, quite a bit first semester, we, we realized something interesting about polar coordinates. Questions, questions about plotting points? Polar coordinates, unlike rectangular coordinates, are not unique. Because we know that if we're at a particular point and we go around the, cir around the circle two by 2 pi radians, we get back to the same point. So we can say that r theta, some point in polar coordinates, if we add any multiple of 2 pi or subtract any multiple of 2 pi to our angle, we get back to the same place. So we get that this equals r theta plus or minus 2 n pi. So this just means an even multiple of pi. We can go around the circle as many times as we want. We get back to the same place. Well, we can also talk about <coughs> negative radiuses. So r theta is going to be the same as negative r comma theta plus or minus 2n plus 1 pi. So this is an odd multiple of pi. So let me, I want to plot a point here to illustrate what this negative r tells us to do. So essentially what we're going to do for a negative radius is go to the angle that it tells us, but instead of plotting the point there, we go the opposite direction. That's what the negative r tells us. So here is, let me, here's my graph. I'm going to put it down here. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to plot um, negative four pi over three, what I'm going to do is go here to my pi over three angle, but instead of going up here, the negative four is telling me I'm going to go four units down here. So this is negative 4 pi over 3. So the negative 4 just tells us go in the opposite direction. We go to pi over 3, and then we go 4 units this direction rather than that direction. So there's my pi over 3. I'm going to go, instead of plotting here, I go 4 units in the opposite direction. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can see that negative 4 pi over 3 is at the same point as positive 4 5 pi over 3. So they're the same, they're the same point. This won't come up a lot, but I just want you to be aware of it. Yes? Couldn't you go 4 back and then pi over 3 is like continuing from there? Yeah, yeah, you can think of it that way. Yeah, it's just with radius, it, I, I, I think of it going away from the origin is always positive. That, but you can think of it that way as well. If, it, if that makes sense to you, that's fine. All right, questions here? Well, we're not only interested in plotting points. We want to be able to convert back and forth from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates, polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So let's talk about that. 
So we want to do coordinate conversion. Well, our conversions are should be should be familiar by now because they're exactly what we did in chapter four, and they're exactly what we did when we talked about vectors. So here's my point r theta, and we're also going to say that's the same as x y. And here's my origin. What I'm going to do is draw a nice little right triangle. There's theta, there's x, there's y, and there's r. We know that from the Pythagorean theorem that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And we know that tangent theta is y over x. Tangent theta, opposite over adjacent. This is how we're going to convert from rectangular to polar. We also know from this triangle that x equals our cosine theta. Because cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r, solve for x. And y equals r sine theta. So those are going to be our conversions from polar to rectangular. And they're all based on this little right triangle. So let's take a look at some conversions. Let me back up really quickly. Questions about our triangle and what we wrote down there about the triangle. OK. Um, so we're going to convert from polar to rectangular. So our point is 4 pi over 6. And this is our theta. We know that x equals r cosine theta. And we know that cosine of pi over 6 is Oh boy, here's that unit circle stuff again. Square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2. Small angle, cos cosine is the x coordinate, long side. 4 times square root of 3 over 2. You all were wondering. I could, I could tell. I, I had a sense. When are we going to start using the unit circle again? I'm getting tired of not using the unit circle. Well, here it is. So x is 2 square root of 3. Y is 2 sine pi over 6, and the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. One half. So this is 2, so this is before, sorry. <coughs> I jumped the, jumped the, the answer, and yeah, I jumped the gun. So that, so that comes out to 2. So this point in rectangular coordinates is 2 square root of 3 comma 2. All right, questions there? Not quite. Um, we're going to convert negative 2, 5 pi over 4, to rectangular coordinates. So x equals negative 2 cosine 5 pi over 4. And the cosine of 5 pi over 4 is? Negative, because we're in the third quadrant. Negative 2 times negative square root of 2 over 2. We get square root of 2. y equals negative 2 sine 5 pi over 4. Sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2. Square root of 2. So this point equals 
in rectangular coordinates, square root of 2, square root of 2. And if we think about that, we go 5 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant, but then we go two units this direction, it's going to take us to the first quadrant. <coughs> All right, let's go the other direction. So we're going to go from rectangular to polar. Uh, first one is negative 1, negative 1. So this is x, y. And we're going to go to r theta. So for this one, we know that r equals, can we do this without um, calculating it? Square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. <coughs> That's going to be the square root of 2. Tangent theta is negative 1 over negative 1, which is 1. So we need the angle whose tangent is 1 in which quadrant? Third. Quadrant. Third. What angle is that? Uh, 5 pi over 4. That's going to give us 5 pi over 4. So in, rec in polar coordinates, we get square root of 2. 5 pi over 4. How about the point 0, negative 2? Let's do this one by making a graph. There's 0, negative 2. What's, how far is the distance? What's the distance from the origin? Two units, r equals two. What's the angle on the negative y-axis? Theta equals three pi over two. So this point is going to equal two, three pi over two. No, it's, it gets way better than this. All right, we don't only want to convert coordinates. Questions on converting coordinates? We want to be able to convert equations. That's ultimately where we're going. We want to look at the equations of conic sections in polar coordinates. So let's talk about equation conversion. This is my, this is my favorite part of this lesson. All right, so we're going from, for the first ones, we're going from polar to rectangular. R equals 5. So this says that no matter what, the radius is, or what the angle is, what theta is, the radius is 5. What is that? That's a circle. A circle with radius, <laughs> circle with radius, <laughs> 5. What's the equation of a circle with radius 5? x squared plus y squared. X squared plus y squared equals 25. If you didn't see that right off, we can do our conversion. Let's square both sides. r squared is 25, and r squared is x squared plus y squared. This is a pretty nice equation. r equals 5. That's nice and easy to work with. x squared plus y squared equals 25 is not as easy to work with. Second one, 
theta equals pi over 4. So this says no matter what the radius is, the angle that you have with the, with the positive x-axis is pi over 4. What is that? That's a line. Well, let's come up with the equation for the line. That, that's a nice equation for a line, isn't it? Theta equals pi over 4. That's a really nice equation. Tangent theta is y over x. So tangent of pi over 4 is y over x. What's a tangent of pi over 4? y over x equals 1. So the line is y equals x. The tangent of the angle is the slope of the line. And that's related to why it's called the tangent. Tangent has something to do with the slope. And in calculus, when you, you calcu find tangent lines, that's one of the big, big ideas in calculus, finding the equation of tangent lines. All right, questions? All right, it gets even better. We're going to go the other direction. No, we're, no, I'm sorry. We're still going polar to rectangular. But we're going to make our equations more interesting. R equals 2 cosine theta. Well, we know, we know that R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. And R cosine theta equals x. So it sure would be nice if we had an r squared here and an r cosine theta there. What can, what can I do? Well, if I square it, I don't get an r on this side. But if I can, I can multiply both sides by r. And I get r squared equals 2r cosine theta. Well, this is perfect. x squared plus y squared equals 2x. Do we know what that is? Let me write it a little differently. x squared minus 2x plus y squared equals 0. Complete the square. Complete the square, yes. r squared is x squared plus y squared. To r cosine theta is x. Complete the square. x squared minus 2x plus 1. Divide this by 2 and add 1. Plus y squared equals 1. x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 1. What is that? That's a circle shifted one unit right. So this is the equation for a circle shifted one unit right on the x-axis. Isn't that nice? r equals 2 cosine theta, that's a pretty nice equation. x squared, x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 1. That's kind of a messy equation. So now we all know, um, you, we all know what a polar bear is, right? Yes. A rectangular bear after coordinate conversion? Wait. Um, well, I, I, so there's an AP calculus review session tomorrow morning from 9 to 1. I'll be there. So if you come tomorrow morning at nine, from 9 to 1, well, you can get match jokes. No, we need to know about this. All right. So this this is where we're going with um, with polar coordinates. So let's look at this last example. What are we What are we going to do here? Sine theta is one minus cosine. Just kidding. How about let's get rid of that fraction. Good idea. Multiply by everything by one minus cosine theta. 
No, I'm just multiplying both sides of the equation by 1 minus cosine theta. And then I'm going to say r minus r cosine theta, distribute, equals 1. Um, and I know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what does r equal? r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. And r cosine theta is x. Is x. So this is the square root of x squared plus y squared minus x equals 1. Do we know what that is? Let's keep going. Let's make it look a little nicer. Because now that we're in pre-calculus, we all have um, strong algebra skills. Now I'm going to square both sides. When I square this, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Don't want to harm any small animals. I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. y squared equals 2x plus 1. I'm going to go one step further. What is that? That's a parabola. That's a parabola. What? Horizontal parabola. <laughs> so this is the equation of a horizontal parabola in polar coordinates. So this is what we're going to end up working with at the end of the chapter. And we'll be able to look at this, and we'll be able to tell, is it vertical? Is it horizontal? Does it open uh, up? Does it open down, left, right? We'll be able to tell what the, what, where the center is, where the directrix is. Sorry, where the vertex is, where the directrix is. Is it Questions? Should we do a couple more of these? No, one more time. All right. Not, not super long because I have to take my son somewhere. What's that? Mm -hmm. All right, there we go.